Hey, today I'm going to cover how to score the SCL90 and uh, just go in depth a little bit about what um, you have to do to, to get an accurate score for this. So to start off with, um, you'll need a piece of paper that looks like the chart on the right hand side here. Um, so if you don't have this, you can make it in like an Excel or Word or any kind of <laughs> thing that has a chart. Um, but it should have listed there which scale you're using, the mean score, the population mean, the popula population standard deviation, the Z score, and the T score. I'm going to talk to you about how to, how to get each one of those uh, scores there. But basically, what you're looking to do for this very first part is that you're going to sum up all of the different uh, scales that you have. So somatization, obsessive compulsive, interpersonal sensibility. And what you'll notice is that on each of those scales, um, as you add them together, you're trying to get the mean score. So you'll see that the uh, number that you're dividing by is equal to the number of items that exist. And again, that's just because you're trying to get the, the mean score. Um, so as you go through the SCL, you'll add up each one of those items. So you'll add up your total for somatization. Um, you'll add up 1, 4, 12, 27, 40, 42, 48, 49, 52, 53, 56, and 58. And you'll take the sum total of all of those and divide by 12. Um, once you do that, you should get a mean score for each one of the things that you just scored. And I have filled in here just um, one that I did for, for somebody. So um, uh, those numbers are just uh, numbers I got off of giving the SCL to, to somebody else. And so what you'll do is once you get your mean score, um, the next thing that you want to do is fill in your population mean and population standard deviation. This is pretty easy to do because all you have to do is look off of the chart that's given here. Um, if you don't have the chart yourself, this is an accurate one, so you can use it. Um, and you basically are just looking to see whether or not you have um, a population that you're dealing with um, was, was, the, was the individual that you scored um, a male, then you'll use this mean. Um, if it was a female, then you'll use this mean score. And what you do is you just go through and you fill out the mean score based off of each one of those standards, um, depending on uh, who it was um, that you, you scored. And so when you do that, your chart will look something along the lines like this, where um, you're, again, copying it over. I caught the copy the male chart because the person who I gave this to was male, um, but you could just as easily use a female chart um, and copy over the score for um, females in, instead. When you complete that portion, you then are going to use the same chart and you'll move over to where it says standard deviation. And again, if your population was male, then you'll fill in the, you'll fill in the uh, population standard deviation for males. If your client was a female, you'll fill in the standard deviation population for females. And so your chart should copy over, and it should look exactly like either this or if you're again your client was female, it'll look like the the other column that's present there. Now, once you have your mean score, your population mean, and your population standard deviation, the next thing that you're going for is to figure out your Z score. And how a Z score works is it's basically just trying to figure out where in a standard population the score that you have fits. And so what you're doing is you're taking the mean score that you had, that is your observed score, and you are subtracting from it the population mean, and then you're going to take that number and divide it by the population standard deviation. So if we look at this chart on uh, somatization, we can see that the mean score was a zero and the population mean was 0.99. 
So take both of those scores and we'll plug them in here. And again, zero was the mean score, 0.99 was the population mean. So we just put those two scores in. And um, that of course would give us negative 0.99. So we take that number, negative 0.99, and we divide it out by the population standard deviation, which in this case is 0.83. And so we take point nine, or negative 0.99 divided by 0.83, and we'll see that that gives us a number of negative 1.19. And so that's what goes into our z-score. Let's take a look at the next one, obsessive compulsive. Obsessive compulsive has a mean score of 0.1 and a population mean of 1.86. So we'll plug in those numbers. Neg or sorry, 0.1 for the mean score and 1.86 for the population mean, and then would subtract those. So we take 0.1 minus 1.86, and we'll divide that by the standard, uh, the population standard deviation, which is 0.94. And so again, that's going to give us a number of negative 1.87. So what you do is you just go through the whole chart filling it out exactly like that, it's where you subtract uh, the mean score from the population mean, and then you divide it by the population standard deviation. Once you have every z-score, then that can give you what you need for your t-score. What a t-score is, is figuring out how far away from a standard deviation um, something is. And so when you're looking at the standard, uh, sorry, when you're looking at the t-score, what you're basically doing is just using the z-score to figure out how far away from the mean something is. So um, because of this, you use 50 as the middle point on a bell curve. And um, your t-score is just basically equal to 50 plus 10 times your z-score. So in this instance, um, for somatization, our z-score was negative 1.19. And so we know because it's a negative number, it's going to be below the mean. It's going to be somewhere lower than um, the, the average. And so we multiply that out and it will bring us a negative 11.9. And then we add that to 50, which gives us a score of 38.1. So we take that 38.1 and we'll put it back into the t-score and that gives us um, our t-score of 38.1. And again, you just do this for each one of the, the areas that you have. A t-score that's below 45 or above 70 is significant. So we'd say for this individual that their somatization is significant because it's below where we would expect it to fall between the 45 and 70. Um, if you have a number that's really close to 45 or really close to 70, um, but it's within the range between those two, that's perfectly fine. A lot of these numbers are gonna be really close to 70 or really close to 45 because the standard deviations um, not spread out very much. So that being said, um, I hope that gives you some idea of how to score the SCL90, and I hope you have a wonderful day.